Sereno Scientific is a pioneering clinical stage biotech company driven by strong scientific leadership and innovative drug development. Uniquely positioned to make an impact on rare and common cardiovascular disease. Sereno grew out of Professor Sverker Jern's discovery of the potential of the HDAC inhibitor valproic acid for treating cardiovascular disease. Working at the forefront of new drug development, Sereno is looking to transform the treatment of cardiovascular disease, including through HDAC inhibition, enabling reverse remodeling of diseased heart tissue and blood vessels. Sereno's current focus is on developing a disease-modifying treatment for the fatal rare disease pulmonary arterial hypertension, PAH. PAH is a disease characterized by vascular remodeling, which increases pulmonary pressure and ultimately compromises the right heart ventricle. Sereno's lead drug, the HDAC inhibitor CS1, is currently being evaluated in an innovative phase two trial in collaboration with leading healthcare company Abbott. Conducted across 10 sites in the United States. This trial utilizes Abbott's leading edge cardio MEMS technology to frequently monitor pulmonary pressure in a drive towards defining the optimal dose range for subsequent clinical trials and clinical use. The primary endpoints are measures of safety and tolerability running alongside a range of efficacy markers for cardiovascular function, quality of life, and disease prognosis. Epigenetic modulation unlocks DNA and impacts gene expression without changing the DNA structure. HDAC inhibition by CS1 allows DNA unfolding to confer beneficial disease-modifying effects, encompassing restoration of endogenous fibrinolysis and a unique multiple mode of action, pressure reducing, reverse remodeling, anti-fibrotic, anti-inflammatory, and anti-thrombotic. CS1's unique efficacy profile forms an excellent match for PAH's disease mechanisms. Strong clinical and preclinical drug development programs are pursuing multiple cardiovascular disease indications. Supported by leading clinical and scientific experts dedicated to improving the health of patients with conditions that have high unmet needs. Sereno has a novel HDAC inhibitor in the pipeline, along with a novel prostacyclin receptor agonist. The potential for patients and clinicians is significant. Sereno's commitment to developing this exciting portfolio for the treatment of rare and common cardiovascular diseases heralds a future where patients with these conditions will be able to live longer with better quality lives. Sereno Scientific, welcome to the future. There you go, a summary of what we're doing. Um, just released actually a couple of weeks ago. So why are we in this business? 200 million is at risk today of a serious cardiovascular event. We want to do something about it. That's better than what's out there. So uh, the company was formed by Professor Sverkerian, as you heard. We are targeting two new therapeutic approaches, HDAC inhibition, epigenetic modulation. In cardiovascular disease, we are first with that in clinical trials. And we're also pursuing a IP receptor agonist. We'll get to that later. So we have three programs, one in phase two, the HDAC inhibitor CS1, and two in preclinical work. Um, we are pursuing this trial, as you saw, in 10 centers in the US in pulmonary arterial hypertension, very rare and fatal disease. Headquarters in Gothenburg, office in Boston, and major research being done in the US. So we believe we are pioneering clinical stage company with the HDAC inhibition into clinic in cardiovascular disease. We have very strong leadership. We have one, some of the best cardiovascular people involved in the company and in the scientific advisory board. We have a global presence. So epigenetic modulation in cardiovascular disease has not been brought to clinic before. And I'll show you why that's so exciting. The IP receptor antagonist is also quite exciting, and the research behind it, we'll get to that. So we believe that with HDAC inhibition, we'll have disease-modifying capacity, 
preventing and possibly reversing the structural changes in the vascular and, and the heart that uh, these patients suffer from. We are very well positioned if we succeed with our programs to make a difference. Our preclinical programs are, has recently been presented uh, to prevent thrombosis without causing bleed, the major issue in this fantastically large market. So, three programs, uh, this is the timeline, uh, phase two, top line, data, Q1 uh, next year with CS1 in the rare disease pH. And to bring the two preclinical programs into an IND submission and approval by uh, next year. Yeah, epigenetic modulation is not changing the structure of DNA, but actually the expression of proteins. And sometimes that goes wrong and then you get a disease. And we have found a way to impact that that could be very interesting for patients with cardiovascular disease. And the drug that we now have in the phase two trial, CS1, uh, in the orphan disease, PAH, has been documented to have these effects in uh, preclinical work. Pulmonary pressure reduction, reverse remodeling, antifibrotic, anti-inflammatory, and anti-thrombotic effects. All these things uh, the patients suffer from, and they are impacting the progress and also the uh, prognosis for these patients. And this drug would fit like a hand in a glove if, uh, for these patients, and that's why we're pursuing it in pH. The, the effects can also have impact in other indications. So the phase two trial, as you saw in the movie, we are pursuing that in the US, and 30 patients uh, in three different dosages, and we are collaborating with Abbott with this uh, fantastic technology of implantable pressure uh, measuring device. And um, top line data in Q1 next year, we have randomized the first patients, 30 patients to be included. It's a safety tolerance study, but we're also measuring a number of functional parameters and prognosis in that study. So it's very exciting design on this study, and it's been presented at PVRI in um, Athens earlier this year by our principal investigator, Dr. Bensa, and will be presented uh, in Nashville at CHEST. Uh, coming up in October. So uh, quite some interest in this study that we are pursuing. Let's now move to the preclinical work. Uh, you see there EHA and ESC. I just came back from the ESC, the biggest cardiology congress in the world, where we presented uh, very interesting data on our CSO14, the novel HDAC inhibitor, which is actually able to prevent thrombosis without bleeding. And that's very much sought after. Previously this year, we presented similar data on our other uh, preclinical program, the IP receptor agonist CS585, prevention of thrombosis without bleed. So we have these three programs, and let's look a little at more at why is it so interesting that we have presented this data on the preclinical portfolio. Well, 22 million are expected to die annually by cardiovascular disease in 2030. 80% of those are going to be thrombosis. So that's how you get your stroke in the brain or your myocardial infarction. That's why people die most commonly on the planet. Now, the drugs that are used today are the ones on top here in the man there, right? And they are all used to prevent thrombosis, but they are causing a, a significant risk of bleed, including fatal bleeds. So there is a need for a new strategy for these uh, patients that can prevent thrombosis without causing a risk for bleed. And this has been sought after. Uh, uh, research have tried to add these to each other, the current drugs, but that causes even more bleed. So there is a, a very strong need for something that's better. Let's have a look at what was presented uh, earlier this year on CS585, our preclinical drug, um, to prevent thrombosis. This is done in live mice, and you puncture the artery in the mice with a laser, so this starts to bleed. And we compare here versus control. Look what happens. To the left is control, and to the right are two strengths of our drug. This is clot formation, and a thrombosis happens in the control group vehicle. And look at the other ones. There's no occlusion. You prevent the thrombosis. These mice wouldn't get 
a myocardial infarction or a stroke because they would have our drug. And this was caused without bleed, without increased bleeding, which was also measured in this study. Our, in Barcelona, we presented our novel HDAC inhibitor, CSO14, similar data, prevention of thrombosis without bleed. I don't have time to show the video. So these two drugs present new classes of drugs to prevent thrombosis without bleed, which is so much sought after. If you look what's used today, you see warfarin, you see the NOAX, so anticoagulants and antiplatelets, they all cause bleeds. And if you look at our drugs here, CS585, which I showed the movie on, and CS1 and CS014, prevent thrombosis without bleed and is documented in preclinical work. Now, so these are the three programs, and the market is huge here. So PH, seven, uh, antithrombotic for the three billion, and PH 11.7 billion, so major markets. Yeah, that's basically it. I see that the moderator is moving up on me, so I hope you found it interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I'm closing in on you, Stian. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, well, my friends, you know the drill. Any, any questions? Is this the Q&A? So session? then we should invite our medical, our CMO. Right. Part of the CMO. Well, as you're here, Bjorn, uh, let me ask you then, why did you decide to go into PAH as the first indication? I mean, historically, um, Stian didn't um, talk so much about that. But uh, it was discovered that the HSEC inhibition could um, restore TPA in the vessel wall and be a very good antithrombotic without bleed. But then further on in the development, we even had uh, the regulatory approval of doing a, a phase two study in uh, <coughs> antithrombotic treatment in, in knee replacement. But we had discovered that there were so many other effects, like you saw on the slide, anti-inflammatory, anti-fibrotic, uh, reverse remodeling. And we saw that for a small company like us, with that fit, it was probably easy to go first with an orphan indication in a, in a rare disease with, with a high <coughs> unmet need of a disease-modifying treatment. And yes, you mentioned here, it, it is a rare disease. You are now recruiting for your phase two study. Uh, what's a reasonable recruitment rate, considering that this is such a rare condition? I mean, PH, as you, as you said, is a rare disease. There are specialized centra where these patients are going to doctors which have a very high interest and skill in these diseases. So they have a large cohort of patients, even though it's a rare disease, because take a, a country like US, they have 50 specialized centers and 300 plus million people. So these, these um, patients can be screened quite easily and, and then see if they fit our study and then uh, be um, recruited for the study. So we expect that to happen when we now soon have all the centers activated. We are not there yet uh, in, in uh, all of the centers, but at the end of the month we have a majority. So that then we think it will pick up. Yeah, you took my next question, which was going to be whether or not all clinics are recruiting, but they are not. No, they are not. The I mean, they, they, they have, for a couple of months it have only been a couple of centers that have the possibility. Now we have soon a majority uh, having that uh, capacity and possibility. Right. Um, I will turn to a slightly more financial question. Uh, <laughs> you're up. Uh, the subscription uh, of the TO2 started today, actually. And um, Serena's management, you've recently sold warrants. Um, why? Uh, so you could, you could say that uh, you would invest in, in these, but that requires quite a lot of funds for the individual. So um, I think it should be noted that uh, uh, the management team and the board has not sold a single share except of one of the founders, but we've uh, rather acquired or, or, uh, since the company was founded. But uh, as the company grows and this large amount of, of warrants, what uh, is normally or could be done is that you sell enough to 
to be able to uh, write and, and get the shares for that money. And that was done the last time, uh, to my knowledge, and I think that's going to be similar this time. So. Uh, and you talked a little bit about the pre-clinical pre candidates. Um, what kind of interest have you seen from these, from the medical uh, profession or the medical community? I guess that's a question for I you. Mean, <coughs> I was, uh, have been present at both of the congresses uh, where they have been presented. And there have been lots of questions and, and interest. It's difficult to judge, I mean... Uh, the total interest for this, uh, but I'm sure that uh, medical society and pharma companies read this and they probably wait a little until we have uh, clinical data uh, and that will happen quite soon. As Stian said, we, we plan on IND uh, next year and hopefully a phase one study at the end of that year or, or beginning of 24. And that then I think they will probably, because toxicology is an important part of development and people want to know, even though we have uh, reason to believe that these are not toxic products, <laughs> uh, we still they still want to, to wait for that. But I think the interest for the mechanism of action and this novel uh, anti-thrombotic efficacy without bleed, I think is there. Maybe I should add to that too, uh, Bjorn, that um, uh, so we are working with some of the best uh, researchers in the world and we just have our scientific advisory board meetings with them in Barcelona. Uh, and, uh, you know, the excitement in the company is quite uh, significant. And uh, these uh, thought leaders are involved in many trials and have been throughout their lives. So I think that's... Um, and and uh, th the very fact that uh, there are no drugs that can be given without bleed risk in thrombosis is... And if you can present even preclinical data like this, it's very interesting. And it, it, maybe the audience doesn't know, but uh, if you can prove this kind of documentation in in mice, in preclinical work, it's very transferable to man. So if you are able to prevent thrombosis in, in mice, and if you're working in mice in bleed, and also in human blood data, which, which also have been studied, then, then you, you know that you have something very interesting. At the same conference was presented new data on factor 11 A's that show no bleed added to other drugs, but no real efficacy either. So you have to be effective in order to provide something new. And I think the industry is putting a lot of bets on these new agents. And uh, currently it doesn't look that good. So perhaps the interest will turn more to newer agents. Uh, what, what about the financial situation? Should they not be fully Well, I think the latest, the Q2 report, we had 63 million in the bank. I can't speak to what we have now because it's not public information. Uh, I think last time the uh, warrant package last year was prescribed to 97% that time and uh, if this is prescribed to 100% it's 65 million. The uh, individuals that are have has these warrants uh, can subscribe them or not or sell them over the market so I think uh, probably there will be a high subscription rate, but you never know in these markets. So I think it's a good case, though. <laughs> well, thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Been thank a pleasure. You.